Genesis chapter number 26. We'll begin reading in verse 17. The Bible says, And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gaar and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called them by their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, This water is ours. And he called the name of the well Essek, because they strove with him. And they digged another well and strove for that also, and he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from thence and digged another well, and uh, for they strove not, and he called the name of it Roboth. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went up from thence unto Beersheba, and the Lord appeared unto him the same night, and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father, fear not, for I am with thee, and will bless thee, and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he built an altar there, and uh, called upon the name of the Lord, and pitched his tent there, and there Isaac's servants digged a well. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure do thank you for the good singing, the good testimonies. Thank you for being a good God. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us now from the Scriptures. Lord, we're glad for the Word of God. We're certainly thankful for, uh, Lord, you loving us enough to die for us, loving us enough to resurrect on the appointed day, loving us enough to leave us the church, but also loving, enough, loving us enough to provide your Word. Lord, uh, we're thankful, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. May we hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against thee, and may we ever draw closer to God. Now bless those that are working with the uh, young people on the other side. I pray you'd bless their efforts, help our young people, the Lord, to ever be hedged in to the will of God. I certainly do pray for them. They'll be going to a camp meeting this weekend. God bless them and help those young people to ever get on fire for God. Then, God, may it uh, certainly move amongst us, your people, and may we see great revival in these days. Bless now, help people, manifest your will to our hearts, save that one nearest hell, and get glory to your name. We'll thank you for it, for it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. And amen. I want you to notice a couple things from the text. I want you to notice the ethics learned. The ethics learned. Look in verse number 18. The Bible said, And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. We find that he goes on to call the names of the wells the same names his father had called them. Notice, notice the ethics learned. Uh, uh, at the feet of Abraham. Isaac's his son. Uh, Abraham has now died. Uh, and Isaac is continuing on in the things that Abraham did. Uh, uh, friend, listen, uh, you may not understand it. You may not uh, really uh, pay attention to it, but your children are watching you. Uh, and your children are listening to you. Uh, and even if your children do not do what you approve of, uh, the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. Uh, it's important to understand uh, we need to set the right example for our children uh, uh, because they are watching and they are listening. Uh, a lot of times we don't think about that till it's too late. Or a lot of times, we're more interested in making certain our children act a certain way so other people think we're a good parent than us really being a good parent. Hmm? Oh, boy, that went over like a lead balloon. Uh, but it's true. Notice Isaac learned some ethics from Abraham, and he continued it on. But listen, he also did the bad traits of Abraham. You say, what are you talking about? Well, look up in verse 6. 
Yeah, the Bible says, And Isaac dwelt in Gaar. Now look at verse 7. And the men of that place asked him of his wife. And he said, She is my sister. If you would uh, uh, remember, go back to Genesis 12, verse 13. Abraham tells Sarah when they go down into Egypt. By the way, God didn't lead him to Egypt. He went down into Egypt. Uh, when he got down there, he said, You're beautiful to look on. Uh, 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 make sure you tell everybody you're my sister, not my wife, because I don't want them to kill me. That's the same thing he says here. Uh, 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 he, he went on and said, uh, 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 He said, She is my sister, uh, 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 for he feared to say, She is my wife lest said he uh, the men of the place should kill me for Rebekah uh, can I say that Isaac uh, did follow in Abraham's traits uh, and his good things but also the bad hmm? it's kind of like this I'm going to really make people mad but oh well brother Jack we're here it's kind of like a, 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 a mama or daddy that smokes uh, three packs a day but they tell their children don't smoke these things are bad for you what example are you setting before them? Huh? Or uh, 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 folks that uh, uh, do other things uh, they don't want their children to do, and they tell their children, oh, this is bad, you don't do this. Well, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to follow your example, not your words. Hmm? Actions speak louder than words. Hmm? Uh, uh, if you're a parent that's uh, uh, constantly negative, well, guess what you're raising? A negative child. If you're a parent that doesn't encourage your child, guess what you're going to find? You're going to find a child that uh, has no self-esteem. Hmm? Uh, but notice the ethics learned. Listen, parenting's hard. Hmm? You only get one shot. You don't want to blow it with them. And you want to give them everything, but you can't give them anything or else they'll turn out spoiled brats and nobody wants to hang around them. Uh, like Phil, that's why he sits alone. Huh? Parenting's not easy. Say, well, how do I know how to parent? Get in the Bible and live the way the Bible teaches you to live and you'll be a good parent. Hmm? Uh, learn to train your children the way the Bible teaches you to train them. Learn to discipline your children the way the Bible... Yes, I said discipline. Huh? These folks say, well, I'm going to let my kid grow up and de decide for themselves. Do you let them play in the street and decide for themselves if that's a good thing to do? Huh? No, you warn them. Don't go out in the street. You get hit by a car. Huh? Do you let them play with fire? No. You let them play on the stove? No. Huh? No, you don't let them do dangerous... Well, why would you let them raise themselves when it comes to spiritual things? Again, you're playing with fire. Well, I don't know why I said all that, but you're welcome. All right. We see the ethics learned. Notice the enemy lurking. Look in verse number 20. And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Essek because they strove with him. Can I say that... When you're living right and you're doing right, never lose sight of the fact that the enemy's always lurking. Peter said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, uh, as, a as a roaring lion, walk of the mountain, seek him whom he may devour. Can I say, the enemy is always lurking. He's always looking for you to give him an inch so he can take a mile. Hmm? He's lurking. Uh, you're not careful. Things will start running well around the household, and you get to thinking, well, this is a blessing. And you'll forget that enemy. He's, that booger's around somewhere. Hmm? Matter of fact, I get worried if he's not troubling. I get worried if he's not bothering things around the church house, around the home. Huh? We notice the ethics learned. We see the enemy lurking. But notice the encouragement from the Lord in verse 24. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. Aren't you glad the Lord always has a word of encouragement? Aren't you glad when you think that there is no hope or when you think that uh, 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 everybody is against you, aren't you glad you can get in the Bible and God will give you a word of encouragement? Thank the Lord for that. 
Well, I've made everybody mad tonight. Everybody's quiet. Everybody's sitting back. Nobody's really worshiping right now, but I'm going to preach anyway. All right? And it don't bother me if you get upset or not, huh? Because I'm going to go home. I'm going to, you know, finish packing. I'm going to take me a, a, a Tylenol and go to sleep, and I'm going to get up, and I'm going to be at the airport at 6 o'clock in the morning. So you really aren't upsetting me at all tonight, all right? But I'm interested in something in this text tonight. I want you to look at verse 19. The Bible said, And Isaac's servants digged, digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. I want to preach on this thought. Maybe this will perk you up a little bit. I want to preach on a well in your valley. Isn't that what it said? That they digged in the valley and found there a well. I'm glad to say that there is a well in your valley. Hmm? Now, at least we love the mountaintops. We love it when we can be on the mountaintop and all the bills are paid and nobody's sick and, and we can shout the victory and everything's good on the mountaintop. Uh, but it seems like we spend more time in the valley than we do on the mountaintop. Uh, we can take refuge in the fact that Song of Solomon chapter 2 and verse number 1 uh, uh, tells us he's the lily of the valleys. Uh, not just the valley, but the valleys. You're going to go through valleys. Uh, man's days are few, uh, few and full of trouble. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, I'm glad even in the valleys, the Lord's there. There's a lily in our valleys. Uh, but according to the Word of God in this text, uh, while they were in the valley, they found a well there. Uh, and friend, you can even find a well in your valley. What a blessing to know, uh, regardless of your circumstances, uh, regardless if the sun is shining uh, or it's a cloudy uh, a sky overhead, uh, uh, you can still look around and find a well in your valley. Uh, uh, can I say first of all, in the valley of your lostness, uh, there was a well of regeneration. Uh, notice what it said there in verse 19. Uh, they found a well of springing water. Uh, you remember what John, in John chapter number 4, uh, when the woman at the well came to Jesus, uh, she had to come in a time when the other women weren't there. Uh, her life was a scarlet life. Uh, uh, she was mocked and talked bad about throughout the town. Uh, she came out to draw some water uh, and Jesus said that water you, you drink of it you're going to thirst again uh, but in John 4 14 he said but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him uh, shall never thirst uh, but the water that I shall give him uh, shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life uh, I'm glad in the valley of my lostness uh, hey, uh, I found a well of springing water uh, his name is Jesus Jesus, uh, and when he saved me and sealed me, uh, I'm glad he put in me the Holy Spirit of God uh, that springs up, uh, that wells up, uh, that'll give us a fresh drink when we're in a valley. Uh, I'm glad for that living water. Uh, what a blessing uh, that in that valley of lostness there's a well of regeneration. Uh, notice I didn't say reform. He didn't reform me. He regenerated me and made a new creature out of me. In the valley of your lostness was a well of regeneration. But can I say this? In the valley of your lassitude was a well of reinforcement. You say, what does that word lassitude mean? It means when you've been exhausted. Did you ever get weary? Did you ever get weary in well-doing? Did you ever feel like your feet were in concrete blocks and every step was a chore? Can I say in that valley... There is a well of reinforcement. In Genesis 21 and 19, the Bible said, And God opened her eyes, talking about Hagar, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad to drink. She thought she was going to die there in the wilderness. Her and her son had nothing to drink, but God took care of her. And can I say, when you get weary, when you think you can't go on anymore, hey, you'll find a well uh, of reinforcement in the midst of your valley. Uh, uh, the Lord knows when to come and give you a cool drink. Uh, he knows when to come and throw a morsel of bread your way. Uh, he knows how to send uh, 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 a check in the mail to pay that bill you can't pay. Uh, he knows how to lift up your head when you're low. Uh, I'm glad uh, uh, the Lord can meet with us in our valley. Uh, put a spring back in our step. Uh, uh, get us going back down the path called straight uh, and get us uh, exactly where we need to be in him uh, 
in the valley of our lassitude, you'll find a well of reinforcement. I thought about this in the valley of our lows. There's a well of refreshment. The Bible says in Psalms 84, 6, who passing through the valley of Baca, which means a ba valley of tears, make it a well. Can I say, even when we're brokenhearted, God's got a valley. In that valley of brokenheartedness, there's a well of refreshment. God knows how to refresh our souls. He knows how to help us in the lowest of times. You can say that valley might be called, or that well might be called the well of grace. He's got grace for every need. He, listen, uh, the old songwriter wrote, Tears are language that God understands. Can I say that every one of us, according to Psalms 56, I believe it is, God has a tear bottle. And God stores up the tears of the brokenhearted. But hallelujah, neighbor, there's coming a day when he, God himself, will wipe the tears from our eyes. Uh, but until that day, God understands our brokenheartedness. Uh, and God has a way to refresh us in the midst of that valley. Huh? A lot of times we don't understand why we're going through a valley. We don't understand the heartache. We don't understand the hardships. We don't understand the tragedies. We don't understand the trials. We don't understand what's going on. But then God will come. And he'll give us a drink of something that this world doesn't know anything about. It might just be a peace that passeth all understanding. Where we don't even understand it, but we get peace. Hmm? What price do you put on that? Hmm? Uh, I'm glad for the peace of God. Can I say this? It is worth living and walking as close to Christ as you can so that when you face that valley, you'll have that peace. I've seen folks away from God, they don't get that peace. But I've also seen folks right in the middle of God's will and have one of the worst things in the world happen in their life, and yet they can lift their hands toward heaven and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Why? Because of that valley. In that valley there's a well, and in that well they find peace, they find grace, they find refreshment for their hurting soul. Listen, you've never had your, your heart broken you've never been hurting that bad you ought to praise the Lord but I know a lot of people that's had broken hearts I've seen a lot of people follow a casket to a graveyard not understanding why I've seen a lot of people walking down a corridor of a hospital not understanding why I've seen a lot of people uh, uh, looking around not understanding why but because of that well they don't need to understand they just choose to trust in God, knowing as that him we sang earlier, he does all things well. Uh, we see that in the valley of our lows was a well of refreshment. Can I say in this, in our valley of labor is a well of rest. In Exodus chapter 2, shortly after God's called Moses to go back into Egypt, Moses just runs to Egypt, tells Pharaoh exactly what God said. Pharaoh didn't appreciate it. Hmm? Uh, he didn't appreciate, first of all, that Moses showed back up. And then he didn't appreciate that God, through Moses, tells uh, Pharaoh, let God's people go. Well, listen to what the Bible says in Exodus 2.15. Now, when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. Boy, that's a real blessing. God calls you to go down there and tell somebody, and the guy wants to take your head off. Hmm? Uh, uh, and you thought you wanted to be a preacher. Hmm. But anyway. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Uh, can I say, in the valley of our labor, you'll find rest. I'm sure Moses was scratching his head thinking, I was out here tending sheep, minding my own business, saw that burning bush, thought, well, I'm going to check this thing out. And then God called to him from the bush. God told him to put off his shoes for the place where he standeth was holy ground. 
and God spoke to him and Moses uh, humbled himself before the voice of God and God said, I, I'm going to send you down to Egypt and then Moses begins to make excuse. I'm not eloquent of speech. He says, take Aaron with you. You find when he get down there to Egypt and Aaron never says anything. It's always Moses. But here Moses is doing what God wanted him to do. But it didn't turn out the way Moses played out in his mind. See, Moses just thought by delivering the message, Pharaoh would let God's people go and, and everything be hunky-dory. But what, God, what Moses didn't realize what God was doing, he didn't just want to deliver the Israeli people. He wanted to break Egypt. And so God kept hardening Pharaoh's heart until he not only broke Egypt, but he destroyed Pharaoh. Huh? Say, so what are you trying to say, preacher? I'm saying a lot of times when we're laboring, we don't understand what's going on. And sometimes we can even get a little discouraged. But in the valley of our labor, God provides rest. There was a well right there. Can I say, Hebrews 4, 9, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Hmm? The most blessed and the most satisfied you'll ever be is in the center of God's will, even if you're in the midst of your enemy. Hmm? And can I say, always in the midst of your labor does God provide a well. There is a well of rest. Can I say this? In the valley of your losses you'll find a well of rejoicing. In Isaiah chapter number 12, we find the verses, Bible says in verse number 2, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Can I say, even in the midst of our losses, you'll find a well of rejoicing. Of course, Isaiah chapter 12 is dealing with the kingdom. It's dealing with those 144,000 Jews that have come out of great tribulation. They've been hunted. They've been sought after. They've been sought to be destroyed. Uh, but God delivers them, uh, and they find a well of rejoicing in the well of salvation. And you can too, my dear friends, even in your losses. You can find that you can rejoice in the fact they can take everything they want from you, but they can't take your salvation. You can rejoice in the fact you're saved and you're going to heaven. Mm -mm. Now, let's go back to our text. Let me wind this thing up. Some of you have been sucking on your thumb since the first point of introduction. Won't mention any names, but I'm thinking about it. Huh? Now, we've talked about they found a well in their valley. Now, I want you to beware. God always provides wells in our valleys. But I just want you to be aware of that, some things. You know, the enemy knows that. Notice that the enemy wants to stop your wells. Look at verse number 18 again. Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. Here it is, for the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. Can I say the enemy always wants to stop your wells? Hmm? Hmm? If the enemy can cut off your, your supply of wells, you don't get any reinforcements from the glory world. Hmm? Can I say... Go study World War II. Uh, the young men that we sent that aligned with the forces in Europe was not the greatest army on the face of the earth. But we won the war. Say, so how did we win the war? God was with us. But if you go study it, we cut off Hitler's supply chain. We divided his army. They could not get fuel for their tanks. They couldn't get food for their troops. Uh, they could not uh, 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 get the supplies of weaponry they needed. Therefore, we won the war. Can I say the enemy always knows to divide and conquer? If he could cut off our supply chain, stop our wells, we'll dry up on the vine. Huh? He will try and stop your well of your prayer life. 
He'll try to stop up the well of your Bible reading. He'll try to stop up the well of your attendance to church. He'll try to stop up your ears when I get to preaching on your parenthood. Huh? Yeah, you know what? I've seen some of them put your fingers in your ears while I've been preaching. Huh? See, the devil wants to stop your wells. The enemy always wants to stop your wells. But not only that, the enemy will strive for your wells. Look at verse 20. Look what the Bible says. And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. Hmm. They're going to strive for your wells. How many out there are telling us we can't preach this Bible the way God wrote it? How many of them out there tell you you don't need to go to church three times a week? How many of them out there tell you you don't need to be that religious? Uh, you don't need to do this and you don't need to do this and you need to accept this and you need to accept that. Isn't it amazing how the world tries to tell the church how we're to react and how we're to, we're to worship? I read an article yesterday. Was it yesterday? It might have been Friday. I don't know. All my days run together. I'm glad I just remember I read an article. But the article said 13 ways that the church is going to grow in North America. I thought, well, I'm interested to see what they're going to say. Because I guarantee you they're not going to say preaching. They're not going to say old-time worship. They're not going to say... So I began to read. I was actually pleasantly surprised Brother Bob, that the article said the church, the only way that it will prosper. Now, when I say church, I'm talking about the ecumenical religious world church that everybody refers to. I'm not talking about the local, visible, baptized body of New Testament believers. But they said the way the church will thrive in North America because it's taken some steps backwards. The only way to thrive is it has to get back to its roots. I thought, wow. I thought we weren't supposed to be what the church used to be. And then it said that people want something that is much more substantiated and older than themselves. I'm thinking, hmm, old time preaching, what a blessing, hmm. But then it went on to do what I thought it would do and say that church is going to be moving away from having buildings and now it'll rent shopping centers and the church will do this and do that. It's a bunch of fluff. But I find it amazing that people that don't know God want to tell people that do know God how to worship God. Right. Hmm? And they will strive with us. I found this comical. I told Brother Thad this this morning. I was at that funeral yesterday, and, and one of the sons of Brother Stewart came up to me, and, and the one that I, I know the least, he came up to me, and he said, I was at your church one time. And he said, you may not remember it. He said, but I'll never forget the message that you preached. He said, I'd like to have a transcript of it, which, you know, we know that means an outline. And so then he begins to tell me the message. He said, it was a message, I want to be a man like her. Well, I didn't preach that message. A fellow by the name Wayne Olby preached that message when we were in the old building. I didn't preach it. So I broke his heart. I said, well, yeah, it was a great message, but I didn't preach it. huh?" But he, his whole reason for that, he says, how do you get away with preaching something like that today? I said, well, I preach it the way I've always preached it. I don't care what the world and the woke crowd thinks. You know, I just tell what the Bible says. They got a problem with that. They'll have to take that up with God. Huh? But it's amazing how people think, well, the whole society has changed, so therefore the church has to change. Oh, watch. When society starts doing what the church stands for, society will change for the good. Hmm. But they'll strive with us. They'll constantly be battling us over modernizing and doing this and doing that. Uh, You've got to be careful. The enemy wants to stop your wills. He wants to strive for your wills. But then the enemy wants to steal your wills. Look at verse 21. And they digged another well and strove for that also. Now if you study verse 20. When they dig the well of Essek, 
the herdmen strove for them and said, This water is ours. They strove for that well. When in verse 21, they digged another well and said they strove for that also. They didn't even put up a fight for that. They just come and stole it. Can I say something? You don't give up one inch of ground because if you do, the next time they won't even fight you for it. They'll just come and take it. The enemy... has run over people for years through intimidation. You know what the Bible says? The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. So why does the church give up any ground? Can I say compromising an inch is still compromising? You see, they strove for the first one there in verse 20, but in verse 21, it said they strove, but really they didn't even put up a fight. They just took it. An enemy wants to steal your wills. Hmm? They've been doing it for generations. Hmm? Used to, it wasn't even an argument what the Word of God was. Now you're hard-pressed to find one because the enemy has stole what the precepts of the Word of God should say. Hmm? How many have ever heard this? What's well, 12 o'clock noon, church is over. Well, no, them old-time meetings. Them old-timers used to bring lunch with them because they'd worship for a while. They'd break, have lunch, and go back to worshiping. Matter of fact, read the book of Acts. Paul preached all night. A fellow fell out of the window, broke his neck. Paul went down there and healed him, raised him up, went back to preaching, preached all night. If you all don't get with me, I may do that tonight. i got to get up early anyway. Might as well just stay up. Hmm? I'm telling you, the enemy wants to steal your wills. Amen. Now listen to me. They can take your will, but they can't take your water. Amen. They can take your will, but they can't take your water. Amen. See, the will's not the important thing. It's what comes out of the will that sustains you. Right. The water. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm uh, I'm talking about the water of the Word of God. You know why you're to memorize and study and to know the Bible in case they come take the physical copies? You've got enough on the inside of you. It don't matter. David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Uh, You can always tell people they're dependent on the Word of God because they know it. They can take your will, but they can't take your water. Water of the Word of God. How about the water of your walk with God? They can't take that from you. Hmm? That old hymn, Hand in Hand with Jesus, they can't take that with you. He's a friend that sticks closer to a brother. They can't take that from you. (coughs) Can I say this? They can't take the water of your worship of God. You can worship God even behind bars. You can worship God no matter where you are. They can't take that from you because that's something God's put in you. Hmm? Now listen. Notice very carefully, and I'm about done. Notice when they took a well. Isaac just went and dug another. Look at verse 21. And they digged another well. Look at verse 22. And he removed from thence and digged another well. Look at verse 25. And he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And Isaac's servants did what? They digged a well. Huh? Every time the enemy took a well, they just dug another one. Huh? How many people sit back, suck their thumbs, well, well, I used to serve God, I used to worship God, but this happened, that happened. That. Well, go dig another well. Quit sucking your thumb. Quit pouting. Quit thinking God hates you. Just dig another well. That's all Isaac did. He just kept digging wells. You know what? After the second time he digged a well, guess who he ran into? The Lord. You say, what did he do when he ran into the Lord? He built an altar and digged another well. He worshipped and then he enjoyed the goodness of God. Hmm? 
Uh, now listen, that word dig means to seek. They were digging, seeking. Hmm? The Bible says in Deuteronomy 4, 29, but if, but if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Matthew 7, verse 7, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Huh? You want to run into the Lord? Start seeking him. Just dig. Seek him. Might have to dig into pages of the word. Might have to seek him on your knees. You might just be seeking him in, in your daily walk, just talking to him, singing a song to him, having the Lord on your heart, meditating on the word of God. I guarantee you, you do those things, you're going to run into him. Hmm? Because seeking you shall find. Do hmm? you know what will help you? If you'll learn the word of God and you'll pray the word of God. If you'll learn to pray to God what God said, God will always answer your prayer. Hmm? He obligates himself from the word of God, so when you remind him what he said, guess what he's going to do? He's going to show up. Hmm? I don't know how many times I said, Lord, you did say seek and you shall find, and I'm seeking you right now, and I, I sure would appreciate something from the word of God, and boom, before long, there it is. Huh? But I will tell you this, if I'm looking to appease somebody else, I'll never find him. If I start looking for a message so I can impress somebody, I'll never find God. But if I start looking for Him, I always find Him. Hmm? Uh, you just need to keep digging. Keep seeking. You'll find Him. Listen, you'll always find a well in your valley if you're seeking the lily of the valley. Said all that to say. Said all that to say this. You're gonna face some battles, but you'll never face it alone. Because long before you get there, God's already there. He's just waiting for you to look around to find Him. You might have to do a little digging, but you'll find water in your valley. And can I say, growth always happens in the valley. The most fertile places in the world are always in a valley where all the dew and all the water runs from the mountainside down there and waters the valleys. And friend, we may not appreciate the valley, but it's in the valley we'll get closer to God than anywhere else. Look for that well in your valley. And listen, you'll find exactly what you need in Christ. Let's all stand, Brother Clint, come get a song. Maybe you need to come seek him tonight. Maybe you need to come thank him tonight. Maybe tonight he spoke to your heart. You need to do business with him. That's what this invitation's for. Brother Clint, why don't you come play something for this, Brother Clint? Okay, he's going to sing it a cappella. While he gets that ready, let's pray. Father, thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for being the lily of our valleys. Thank you for the waters of well, wells of waters in our valleys. Bless your people now. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.